All right. So we have uh, an excellent group of clients on the call. Um, I have had the pleasure of meeting most of you, but if you don't know me, I'm Emily Casilla. I'm our um, director of client success here at The Giving Block and work as one of our crypto fundraising strategists. And we are so excited that we are now able to add stock giving to that strategy right within your widget. This is something that launched last week and we've already seen gifts um, coming through. So Mike is going to take us through stock fundraising best practices. Um, he's got a great presentation. He'll, he'll pull up the screen in a moment here to um, take you through really what this looks like, what it means for your organization. And then I will be in the chat answering any questions you might have along the way. Um, and actually on that note, please do um, put questions in the Q&A and we'll keep the chat for the fun stuff. So for those of you who have joined in the last few minutes, please continue to introduce yourselves in the chat. We love to know what organizations are on the call, where you're calling in from. Um, you can also let us know how long you've been a client of the Giving Block. That's always fun to see um, where everyone's at in their, in their crypto fundraising journey. And now really non-cash asset journey, right? With the um, release of this new stock giving. So Mike, I'll hand it over to you. Um, thank you so much for being our special guest today. Yeah, happy to happy to be here. And um, I thought I was the fun part of this, but I guess the chat is where the, the, the real fun is going to take place. So <laughs> let me share my screen here and we can get started. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, all right, uh, Emily, thumbs up. You can see my screen. We got it. Okay. All right. Well, thanks everybody for joining. Sorry, I was a few minutes late. A um, little technical issue with Zoom. But um, we're here to talk about stock donations. Very timely topic as we're getting into giving season. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about why we're doing this, um, some of the benefits for not just the charity, but for the donors. Um, and then kind of what is our process and how do we do it on, on behalf of our, of our clients? And then um, we'll talk a little bit about some fundraising strategies and things like that. So um, let's get into it. So who am I? My name is Mike McLean. I'm head of the Giving Block Institutional. I uh, joined here uh, in February of this year. Um, prior to my time at the Giving Block, I spent seven-ish years <coughs> at Fidelity Charitable doing a whole bunch of different things. Um, first and foremost was processing gifts of non-publicly traded assets, which we call complex assets, which, which include cryptocurrency. I also uh, headed up the trading or liquidation process for all of Fidelity Charitable's publicly traded gifts, and uh, also uh, was overseeing the alternative investments portfolio in the managed accounts. <clears throat> so um, what makes me uniquely qualified to talk a little bit about this, I think there's a, a couple um, prior to my life in philanthropy, I was an equity trader at a company called Sterling Capital Management. And then when I got to Fidelity Charitable, I continued to kind of be in, in, in the traditional financial services world, but also philanthropy. And in my time at Fidelity Charitable, I processed over 500 million in cryptocurrency gifts. I, I couldn't even tell you how many billions and billions of dollars in um, publicly traded stock, ETFs, mutual funds, and bonds that came through my team. Um, so I'm, I'm well aware of kind of the donor base, the donor considerations, time to process, um, you know, and that, that's a big difference between crypto, which is instantaneous and 24 seven. We'll get into one of those nuances and why we have we have a recommended uh, talking point to your donors to say, hey, try and, try and get these stock gifts into the pipeline early December. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about, about that. So that's a little bit about who I am. And now we can get into kind of what we're going to talk about. <clears throat> I'm going to start with, um, you know, the market for stocks and as far as charitable giving goes. And, and I think whenever I talk these numbers to people, um, there's, there's some shock and awe when they see the numbers and they see what, what's possible through traditional finance. And when you couple that with crypto, you've got yourself a, a quite a quite a diverse group of donors that you can attract. And what we're seeing, um, you know, if you had said five years ago, if you'd asked traditional financial services folks five years ago about crypto, they would have said, nope, 
crypto users are very different than you know traditional investors that has changed we're not we now what we're seeing is what what folks in traditional finance are calling the merge and what that means is the the crypto users the diehard crypto natives are starting to bleed over into traditional traditional assets more specifically stocks <laughs> Um, no more evident than what we saw last year with, uh, with GameStop and AMC. Um, and then you're starting to see traditional investment firms kind of bleed over into crypto. You see that on, I would say, a weekly basis. I see another quote unquote brand name coming to the crypto market. Um, <clears throat> even as recently as I think it was two weeks ago, Ken Griffin, who runs Citadel, uh, one of the largest hedge funds in the country, um, in an interview mentioned crypto and their interest in, in engaging with crypto. And in fact, they're building a, an exchange in partnership with Fidelity Schwab and some others. So that merge is happening. So that was a big driver for why we wanted to add stocks um, to, to the portfolio of assets that could, could be accepted through the widget. Uh, and then of course, we'll talk about the benefits of stock, um, you know, stock gifts and what's the process look like from your perspective? What does the process look like from a donor perspective? Um, some of the challenges historically with taking stock as a as a charitable gift. Um, and then, you know, Emily and I can get into some uh, strategies uh, around fundraising. And then um, I'll leave you with a few uh, ideas as to how to kind of position yourself and att attract donors and drive donors to your website for, for donations. I have a, I have something I think you're going to you're going to find pretty interesting given all of the, the turmoil in the markets. Um, okay. So um, before we get started, we're asking if folks can put in the chat a one, if they already accept stock gifts and a two, if we will be kind of introducing you to the world of, of stock gifting. So let's see what that chat looks like. Lots of ones so far, which is great. Yeah, lots of ones. Lots we'll, of we'll be able to help you expand that stock donor base. And save you the laborious, time-consuming nature of processing such gifts. Lots of time, yes. And a yes, few gifts as well. Great. I think the way to the way I would position this to, to the folks on this webinar would be think of us as your outsourced back office obviously for crypto that's always kind of been the case since the the inception of our relationship but now for stocks as well um it's the similar experience for you you have a widget donors go to the widget and then at some point unfortunately quite a bit few, quite a few more days later than crypto but cash will show up in your your bank account and that's mostly because the the, the delay that it takes with brokers moving assets and settlement periods and things like that but um okay so we got a, we got a mix here of ones and twos very cool all right so how large is the opportunity with stocks why should you care well let me get into some of these numbers and um i think you might see pretty quickly why you might care so this is as of September 2022, the traditional U.S. Uh, stock market had a value of 46 trillion. I checked this morning; it's actually up a little bit since we checked this number. So it's actually a little bit higher than that. So, um, so why do you care? And I think the numbers right here over 100 billion. I think the number is probably closer to 125 billion um, in public stock and ETFs were donated to U.S. charities last year um, outside of cash by far the biggest uh, asset received by by nonprofits across the country <clears throat> so again more more into the numbers uh why why you would care about um you know stock well you know we got this Gallup survey of the the folks surveyed 58 percent um say that they own stock now I think what you see is that number excludes things like 401ks and qualified IRAs and things like that in pure purely in brokerage accounts we're talking um these numbers which is pretty pretty big i also th thought these were interesting um stats that came out of that survey which 89% of adults in households earning 100,000 or more own stock um 79% post graduate education and those uh folks between the ages of 30 and 64 65% of those folks own stock in a, in a traditional brokerage account. So 
really, really large audience um, of potential donors here. And of course, you know, we don't have the statistics and the numbers on these, but um, uh, some of these folks are also have crypto. So, um, there, so there, like I said, that merge is, is underway and, and there's, um, you know, there's a lot of overlap between, between um, those two worlds. Um, all right, so what are the benefits of stock donations? Well, let's start with the charity's perspective. Um, so there's a, a guy by the name of Dr. James Russell, and he did a study in 2018. I believe he's a man, he's updating the study for 2021 because I think the numbers are going to be even more impressive. But he has a, a study from 20, 2018, and it, essentially it, it says if you're a nonprofit and you receive non-cash gifts, you're generally going to grow 50% faster than those that accept cash only. When you start to accept non-cash securities, so you think about your stocks, ETFs, mutual funds, bonds, anything that's a secure, a publicly traded securitized uh, product that you can take as a charitable gift, that number goes to 66%. So pretty impressive um, how you can rapidly boost fundraising by diversifying the different assets that you can accept. Um, also, uh, you can grow bigger stock gifts tend to be larger than cash gifts, um, mainly because of the, the tax benefits. And I'll talk a little bit about that on the next slide. Um, and then the other the other thing here, uh, grow smarter, which is, what does that mean? Um, means helping donors kind of understand that one, you accept stock. What's the benefit of accepting stock? They should always talk to their tax tax professional to 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 to, to understand the numbers behind their particular situation. But what we've always tried to do in my, you know, especially in my time at Fidelity Charitable was educate donors on making charitable giving part of their annual or semi-annual health assessment or portfolio review with their planner. Um, they should always be considering the, the tax implications of, of charitable gifts and looking at their portfolio um, with in, as part of the planning cycle to say, oh, here, these are the most highly highest appreciated assets I can give. And now that I know I can give it to my favorite charities, this makes a lot of sense and makes it a lot easier. So from a donor's perspective, a little bit different, um, still the tax consideration, um, but they want donors want to be able to give quickly and easily. There's no easier way to give to charities than cryptocurrency. The second best option is to give them a, a tool and a methodology that's similar to giving cryptocurrency, which is through our our donor portal. And I'll get I'll show you some screenshots in a few minutes as to kind of what that looks like. Um, and again, they can they can give bigger bigger dollars by giving appreciated assets versus cash. And I do have an example for you. We'll break we'll break down um, the numbers behind what that means using some assumptions. Uh, and then again, um, they should be considering charitable giving as part of their overall assessment with their with their wealth planner. So um, let me get into the tax considerations of donating stock, which is probably a large motivator for people who are donating um, to charities. Uh, so what does this mean? IRS considers stock a security. So much like cryptocurrency, they are subject to capital gains. If held for greater than one year, then it's a long-term capital gain. If if held less than a year, it's a short short-term gain. So more than likely, you're looking your donors are going to be looking across their portfolio uh, for assets that they've held greater than one year that are appreciated from above and beyond where they paid the cost basis. Um, so donating public stock could offset, and, and in most cases it will offset that capital gains tax. So it makes it a really a attractive asset to to pull out of a portfolio and make a charitable gift if your charity of choice can process the gift. Um, and I'll get into kind of what what that means in a few minutes. So here's a here's a little example that we pulled together. Now let me caveat this by saying I am not a tax professional and we made some assumptions. Um, the assumptions are at the bottom there. We're assuming a, a federal long-term capital gains tax of 20%. And a Medicare, Medicare surtax of 3.8, sorry, to, a total tax on the, the gain, assuming held greater than one year, of 23.8%. So just to break down some numbers for you, we did this to, to demonstrate. Um, so let's say you have a donor who has 
made uh, some, a stock purchase um, more than one year ago, $250,000. In their annual uh, portfolio health assessment, they are meeting with their, their wealth planner and it says, oh wow, those are $400,000. Now I have $150,000 in gains that I can either hold, I can sell the assets and pay the tax, or I can donate the assets. So let's see what those look like. So let's say the donor wants to sell the assets, let's sell the stock for market value. Um, the tax on that, given that 23.8%, it's going to be $35,700, which means your charity gets $364,300. That's a really, that's a really big contribution. That's, that's, that's great. But what happens if they donate the stock to you? No tax to the donor and $400,000 to the charity. So an extra $35,700 more goes to the charities of their choice simply by educating a donor that you take stock and that uh, there's there could be a tax benefit uh, associated with such a gift. All right, so what is our process? I think this is what everybody's been dying to see. They want to know, you know what, uh, what's going on here? What does this look like? All right, so I'm going to walk you through the process. All right, so you're all... You're all familiar with our, our standard kind of widget that goes on your website. So what, we, what we've done is we've simply added a stock button. Um, we do, we will this week have a standalone stock widget that you can, if you have a stock donation website, you can put that standalone widget right on your stock website. So effectively you could have a crypto landing page, crypto widget, stock landing page, stock widget. So what we want what we want to do here is drive donors to your website drive donors to to any campaigns that you might have going where they can land on this widget and get into the interface and see how easy this process actually can be <clears throat> so once they once they land on the widget they're going to be asked to put in ticker symbol of what they want to make a, a gift of and and the, the the way that the tool is set up as they start typing it'll start to find the 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 actual asset that they want to give. Um, so in this case, um, we, I think we used Apple. Yeah. So I type in AAPL. Apple will come up, and then I'm going to select what's the amount of shares that I want to give. Now, we have an approximate amount here. Uh, or in this case, it's fifteen thousand sixty-five dollars. That is always based on previous day's closing price. So it is just an assumption. It is, it is not intended to be used for the, the actual tax benefit, the tax write-off. And this does not represent or doesn't necessarily represent the actual proceeds because the value of the stock more than likely will, will change between the time they go through this tool and the time the shares are, are, are liquidated. So um, once the donor gets through this, this portion, they go in and, and fill out some information, tell us who they are. Um, here's uh, name, email address, mail, uh, physical address. Then the last uh, piece of information that we need is who's their broker? Where, wh where are these shares going to be sent from? Um, we Right now we support, I think 10, eight or 10 brokers. I think by December, we should have 12 to 15. Um, and it's it's your kind of a you know well known folks Schwab, Fidelity, um, TD Ameritrade. Um, so most of most of the firms are supported. As the donor is going through this experience, we're we're capturing information from the fields. For in this example, Schwab Schwab has a specific form that needs to be filled out, signed and faxed to Schwab to say, hey, I'd like to transfer. 100 shares of Apple uh, to, to a charity. So we're actually filling that form out as they go through this process. And then the last screen is need a signature. And then of course the thank you. So what happens now is we, we've got the form. Uh, it, I should also wanna say that if, they, if they're coming through from a, a broker that's not yet supported, there is an other option. The process for that's a little bit different. I don't want to get too deep in the weeds on, you know, the the 
the, the the process for that. But effectively, if, if they select other, we don't have a form to send a broker. So what we fill out is what's called the letter of instruction. And we send that with a note to the donor with some kind of next steps on what to do. If their, if their broker is supported and we have a form that's filled out, we'll go ahead every day and fax those to the broker. In this case, it was Schwab. So my team will go in, we'll upload that form, we'll send a copy to Schwab and we'll send a copy to the donor with instructions, take no further action, your form is with your broker. Brokers tend to take five to 10 business days to process these transactions, can be longer at the end of the year because of all the work that they do around other charitable gifts and uh, RMDs. So we recommend that by December 15th that they've started this process. Doesn't mean we can't do it after that. It's just recommended that they that they start earlier in the month of December because we don't want them to try and push something over on say December 27th and then their broker can't can't move the shares fast enough and they they move, they miss out on that 2022 deduction. Um so effectively what happens is all of the shares get omnibused at one account at Renaissance Charitable. The reason for that is we have over 2,000 clients on board, um, and it's just oper to operationalize 2,000 individual broker account brokerage accounts, track access, and all that stuff. It just was it wasn't um, wasn't going to be efficient. It wasn't even going to be feasible. So what we do is we omnibus everything at a at the Schwab, uh, excuse me at the Renaissance nonprofit account. The donor will receive a receipt from the giving block co-branded with Renaissance with your charity's name on it. So they do know that the proceeds will be sent to, to the charity. Once the shares are received, the Wells Fargo account at Renaissance, they're sold same day. Uh, well, technically it could be following day, depending on what time of day they arrive. But generally in one to two days, the shares are sold. It's a two-day settlement, unlike crypto, which is instantaneous. So two days after the shares are sold, the cash proceeds will be received in the rent account, and we will go in and we will grant the amount to your charities. Um, you, of course, will have information on your dashboard as to donation, pledges, don donor information, all the same stuff you have for crypto. So if you if you do want to follow um kind of some of these pledges you can you can you can do that i will also just caveat that that by saying that a lot of folks do come through our tool to test it out and get a feel for kind of usability so they're not every pledge will will materialize unfortunately but um you know you'll, you'll get a a, a cash dis distribution um every week uh from from renaissance for any stock gifts that come in okay um Let's see here. Yeah. So Emily. Yeah. All Got right. It. This is the fun part. Um, no, that was really fun too. Thank you so much for walking us through that. Uh, I think it's an also important to note again, this is already automated, automatically updated within your widget. So if you go to your crypto donation page right now, and you look at your widget, you will see an option for crypto and an option for stocks. And you can kind of test what Mike just took us through those different phases. You can look at um, kind of the donor flow that they are experiencing. But as you can see, if you have donated stock in a more traditional manner, this is the most automated flow that exists. It's We are trying to make it as easy as possible for you on the nonprofit, the lowest lift possible for you, as well as all the automations you love and know um, on the crypto side where you're getting the donor reporting, your donors are getting automatically tax receipted, all that fun stuff happens. Those gifts, if you received a stock gift, um, will be transferred to you on Fridays. So really good to underscore um, some of those technical uh, pieces of it. And then Mike, before we get into key strategies, um, Justin did have a question on if there's not a direct broker contact, how do we handle that? Yeah, we don't we don't need a direct broker contact. That, those are actually optional fields. I should have I should have specified that. There's some fields that are required. Broker contact is not one. It's just a nice to have. Most people aren't going to have a direct broker contact. Those are really for you know um, you know the mass affluent probably just going to have a one eight hundred number at Merrill Lynch. Totally fine. Uh, we've worked with a number of the, these brokers to to get you know receiving groups. 
who need to be receiving these these documents and these faxes. So we we actually don't need that. Excellent. Yeah. So that's another thing that we'll take care of on our side. Angie also asked a great question. Does this qualify for the matching grants through SHIP-4? Right now, the active match that we have is specific to crypto. So the million dollar crypto flash match still has about 400K up for grabs. Um, and that is strictly for cryptocurrency, but stay tuned for more matching gifts that might be coming out throughout the rest of this end of year season. Um, and then can we also make sure, just a note on uh, logistics, to try to put as many questions in the Q&A that helps us see them even easier so that we can answer them there. Um, in terms of key strategies for stock fundraising, so just want to review what Mike had said a few slides back about the demographic here, right? So we know the majority of crypto holders are Gen Z and millennials. And there was that chart about the age demographic for the majority of stockholders as well, being 40 to 62. The oldest millennial now is 40 years old. And so we really have this nice Venn diagram of crypto and stockholders between that 30 to 40 age range. So if you do have junior boards, if you have, um, you know, a, a lot of donor data where you can actually pull those age groups, that's a great place to start for really targeted strategy to your high net worth donors that is going to appeal to both of those um, categories, but don't limit yourself, right? Keep, keep the Gen Z to that 62. So keep 18 to 62 year olds are going to, especially if they're a high net worth prospect, um, it's very likely that they are either holding crypto or stocks or both. Um, and that's another thing that we want to um, underscore here, you know, 84 of millennial millionaires are holding cryptocurrency, but most people that have one non-cash asset are holding multiple types of non-cash assets. So this addition is really going to help you in your calls to action. That is the key uh, fundraising strategy that we want to start with for end of year, making sure stock donation call um, CTAs are part of your existing end of year strategies with your crypto strategy, right? Because it is all happening within one widget. They have one landing page to go to. You can do calls out, you know, give your non-cash assets this holiday season to help us further our mission. Um, calls to action like this for your crypto or for your donor base overall are going to go even further than they did last year because not only can they give to you in crypto, they can also give to you in stock. Um, so those high net worth donors are the ones we certainly want to target. And then when we think about digital fundraising or in-person fundraising events that you're having throughout the holiday season, this is another great way to take the QR code um, that leads to your crypto donation page and shoot that out to donors, have it printed on a, you know, if you're having um, an in-person event, it can be, hey, expanding impact by now accepting crypto. They'll see that stocks are there too. Um, lots of different ways you can incorporate this through end of year, through that really easy QR code. And then in terms of stock fundraising with social media, social media is a great way to acquire new donors, right? We're getting our missions out. We're, we're sharing about the impact that we're having to the World Wide Web large audience. And so as you are celebrating Crypto Giving Tuesday, NF Tuesday, these key milestones throughout bag season, throughout end of year, make sure that you're also throwing in stock um, into the language so that donors understand, oh, wow, I can not only give my crypto, but I can also give in this way. Um, we know that it's going to yield different results. Since we launched this last week, we have already seen donations come through. Um, as Mike said, a lot of those, it is essentially just like crypto, honestly, when someone is putting through, uh, their, putting their information into the widget, it's essentially a pledge. They still have to complete that transfer of cryptocurrency. Same thing goes here. What you will see on your reporting is all the gifts that have been fulfilled. Um, so 
keep an eye out for um, that coming to your dashboard very soon. Um, all right, before we move on, we have some additional questions. So what are the fees for processing stock gifts? Mike? Yeah, fees are uh, are generally 3%, and that is what we call, as we call a wrap fee. That includes broker, uh, exchange, SEC fees, everything, all to, all in under one wrapped fee. So effectively, to make, to simplify it, for every $100, $100 that's, that is received, you receive 97. Perfect. <laughs> and will the solution also work for IRA, IRA donations or stock only? Right now it is stock only, but stay tuned in 2023. We've got some interesting things on our roadmap. Excellent. Do, do nonprofits need to have a brokerage account to receive the stocks? No, the nonprofit really only needs to have a bank account to receive the cash proceeds. Um, the brokerage account is, uh, is owned by Renaissance Charitable. Perfect. And that is something to um, that we um, want to highlight is that the bank account that you are already receiving your cryptocurrency donations to is the same bank account that you would receive these donations once automated. And then the impact index fund checks, if this were coming to you via check, the address we have for the impact index fund checks that we've been issuing it would be, we would be utilizing the same address. If you need to update any of this information, email us at support at thegivingblock.com. All right, next slide. We have yeah, a so Real more quick, look, I, there's a, there is a question I do want to address and I think uh, Luis picked up uh, something mm -hmm. I was putting down. Um, if you notice, I said generally it's 3%. Um, I have a lot of lawyer friends, so I, I, I tend to use generally a lot. So generally 3%, but yes, if you have someone who comes to you with say a million or 5 million or 10 million, we're not going to charge 3% on, on something like that. That's going to be more of a custom fee um, tiered down based on the size of the gift and, and the type of asset that it is. When I say type of asset, I mean marketability. If it's something like a blue chip stock and we can get it sold pretty easily, then you know that, that makes it easier for us. But we, those would be done through effectively through our private client service team. So if you just give us a heads up if, that you have a donor that either has a large uh, gift they want to make or require some kind of special handling or a, 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 a personal touch, then we, we can do that through PCS. Okay. Um, all right. Stock fundraising uh, checklist. So what, what do you need to do to get ready for giving season? Well, first up was this webinar. So congrats. We can check the box on that one. All right. So like I mentioned, there's really two two kind of widgets that you can use. If you have just a general fundraising landing page, then the kind of all-in-one widget works great. If you have dedicated landing pages, depending on the asset type. So if you have a crypto landing page, we can send you the code for the, the crypto only uh, widget. And if you have a stock specific landing page dedicated for stocks, we can send you the code for the, um, the stock only widget. Um, and of course, we're, you know, leverage fundraising materials and some assets that come through um, from Emily's team at the end of your toolkit to help promote and attract and inform. I think it's the biggest thing is inform your donors that you can take stock, that it can come direct to you without having to go through like a donor advice fund or something like that. Um, social media, of course, we touched, touched on that. Um, now, this is the... The second to last bullet. Let me let me hit that one last. So you know, existing donor base is 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 probably an, a no brainer, right? It's um, you want to talk to your your donors who have historically given cash or other assets. Maybe they've done stock with you in the past, but now you have kind of a more streamlined process for stocks. So certainly want to reach out and and hit those uh, donors up. Um, and last thing, um, th we will send you a quarterly. Uh, sort of a report on the previous quarter's highest appreciated stocks um, that you can use to go out and, and, and kind of target using specific names. And the reason for that is, although your donors may not hold those specific stock names, um, it may 
get them, you know, to, to get to some ideas on their own, say, well, well, maybe I should look across my portfolio because last I checked, the S&P and NASDAQ were down 20%. Uh, so you want to help donors kind of come to these conclusions on their own. And let me show you what that, what that list looks like, because you might be really surprised by what um, I'll be sending you. Um, and what I'll show you here is the highest appreciated stocks at the top 50, one year, three year, and five year. Um, and it's the, the, one, the, the, the uh, examples I'll show you on the next slide are as of 1031. So as you you start fundraising and we're all kind of feeling a little bit of anxiety going into December, given the markets, I want everybody to know that the S&P and the NASDAQ are only representative of, of part of the market. And there are individual stock names that have performed phenomenally well that may, would make a great charitable gift if it's held in a portfolio. So here's some of the names. You know, let, let's look at the five-year um, price appreciation. Like, I mean, I, when I pulled this list, I had to quadruple check it because I was looking at some of these numbers and thinking maybe a decimal was off, but no. Um, so like Dillard's five years, six up 622% over five years. Anybody who's bought that, who bought that stock five or four years ago is, is up. It's an appreciated asset. So those are, those are some of the ideas to, to help your donors kind of say, Oh, I don't know. I don't know Dillard's, but let me, let me look across my portfolio because I thought everything was down. Um, and for some, maybe everything in their portfolio was down, but I would guess that for most, there's something in their portfolio that's highly appreciated and they may not be aware of it. Um, and then, so that's kind of like the first, the first message. And then the next message, if you have something that is highly appreciated, hey, we can, we can help, we can take it. Um, so here's, these are just some, some examples. The, um, the report that, I, that we'll send every quarter be a little easier to follow, but I wanted to make sure that these are on here as we start to kind of get into, we're on the cusp of, right, Giving Giving Tuesday and Stock Monday and all that stuff. The, some of these names are, are very well known. You got Hess, um, obviously Dillard's I mentioned. Um, you know, and this is just the top 20. And, you know, I, I'll send you the top 50. And, you know, I, I cut it off at 50, but the list was several hundred fields long that had double digit, appreciation. So, um, so yes, there is hope for the fundraising of December, um, especially now that you can take stocks. So let's open it up to qu any other questions that, that may have come up. It's that easy, apparently. Yeah, I did a good did job. Yeah, that, I think that checklist is really critical. Make sure you're logging in to your crypto knowledge base. Um, I'll pop the link to that in the chat. If you have any issues logging in, again, please email support at thegivingblock.com. Uh, we will get your questions answered. We'll help you get logged in. Um, Carla has a great question. Do you have examples of a call to action talking about both ways to give, crypto and stock? Yes, this is coming to your crypto knowledge base that it will be in your end of year toolkit under the email templates section. Um, so we will be releasing a bit, um, a, a few more templates about how to talk about both of these things. But I think one of the key items to remember is just putting it on the menu. And this is going to be a recurring theme that we talk about um, throughout end of year, making sure your donors know stocks are on the menu and crypto is on the menu. When Mike was talking about the ability for us to have two different widgets, if you have a stock landing page and you want just the stock widget, great. If you have a crypto landing page and you want just the crypto widget, great. But if you are undecided, dipping a toe in, leave them integrated. Really assume that integrated approach because that is going to be the low hanging fruit, right? It's just to include stock um, as part of a new way to give for your donors or a more streamlined way to give for those of you who are already accepting stocks in another way. This way really takes a lot of the time off of you. So perfect for end of year when all of you are super busy with your um, multiple fundraising efforts that we all do as fundraisers during December. 
um, this is a great one to, you know, leave it to the TGB team to take care of. Um, Justin asked, will there be a widget to track donations? So the donation reporting will come out the same as your crypto reporting, and it will denote that it's a stock gift, not a crypto gift. It will be right within your dashboard um, where you are able to see those transactions come through with the donor information. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mike, but we have no way for any of these donors to be anonymous. So all correct. Yeah. That's so right. Yeah, all we have to have their, their PII. Yeah. All stock donations are going to have a donor tied to them and you'll get that full reporting. Um, Heather asked, where do we request or access the separate crypto only and stock only widgets? So we will be um, sharing this out with clients next week or in the coming uh, weekly charge. So make sure you are reading our weekly charge that comes out every Monday with client information, and then it will be available in your crypto giving or <laughs> in your uh, crypto knowledge base as well. Um, Okay, Lori asks, the giving block gave us a plethora of information to put on our crypto page. If we just add the word stock after crypto, would most of the information be the same? Yes, thank you for bringing this up. So we talk about this a lot in onboarding new clients because it's the easiest way for us to think about crypto, right? Crypto is another non-cash asset. The IRS recognizes cryptocurrency the exact same way they recognize stock. So because it is um, you know, an appreciated asset where you would owe capital gains, it's really seamless to put these two together. So being able to say, yes, we accept stocks and cryptocurrency that have unique tax benefits is a really easy way to integrate these two. Um, and we, we will update um, uh, some of those updates about where to Put this information, how to put stocks on the menu are coming out in your uh, in your weekly charge and will be in the crypto knowledge base as well for for resources. So always, I know I'm I'm driving you to the crypto knowledge base nonstop. Always feel free to just type in the keyword stocks and it's going to bring up um, all of the resources that will pertain to that. All right. So I think we we got one here. Um, is so oh, where to go? There it is. Uh, is that highest performing stocks graphic in the end of your toolkit? Um, that's a good question. Did we include that, or was that going out separate from the toolkit? So it will be in the webinars um, following this presentation. But Carla, we're also going to um, email out this recording and the presentation deck. So yes, you'll be able to access it there. But anyone who registered for this um, session will also get the recap with um, those highest performing stocks. And that's something, Mike, that maybe we talk about a cadence for updating that um, that would be reasonable. So you can't find it there. That's a great idea. Any other last minute questions? We will have to close in just a minute to let the next webinar come through. As many of you know, we are running multiple webinars back to back to back this end of year season. Um, just a note, we are 15 days away from Crypto Giving Tuesday, which is also Giving Tuesday. So make sure you have prepped for that. Um, getting those emails uh, drafted, tweets drafted and scheduled. Definitely want to make the most of this because as Mike pointed out, there are a lot of stocks that have appreciated over the last five years and um, the individuals holding those will be looking for a place to offset those gains. And the same thing goes for cryptocurrency. Although I'm sure many of you have heard some of the buzz around the crypto market, individuals who have been holding crypto for a long time are still up. And so it's important to recognize that, um, again, there is hope yet. The markets might not be the best they've ever been right now, but there are still donors that we can uncover who um, will be looking to give to your wonderful organizations this holiday season.
Yeah, and I, I think I'll just leave everybody with this. Um, it's amazing how many people I talk to, even in traditional finance, who have careers in traditional finance that don't know, they don't know that giving a, a stock gift could potentially be a, 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 a there could be a tax benefit. So really, when you reach out to your donor base, it's not just about hey we take stocks, but hey it might make sense to, for you to give stock instead of uh, just cash. And here are the reasons why. Um, always talk to their tax professional, but um, generally speaking, giving an appreciated asset is always more effective than cash. Absolutely. And there are blurbs on that in the crypto knowledge base as well, keeping you kind of protected from being a nonprofit, <laughs> giving tax advice and just saying, um, these are the benefits. It is going to be more beneficial to give your appreciated assets, your non-cash assets than to give cash. And as many of you know, cash is also coming soon to your widget. So stay tuned for that. Um, thank you all for joining us. Any last words, Mike? No, looking forward to uh, to December and, and helping everybody on the call raise as much money as we can before 1231. And then coming back on January 2nd, starting all over. Yep. Let's do it. All right. Happy end of year all. We will see you soon.